Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're taking a look at this ARP Pro Soloist, and uh, when I first evaluated it, it was missing uh, quite a number of the, the, the sounds. Uh, so like, we have Fuzz Guitar 2, uh, but, but we don't have Fuzz Guitar 1. So, um, as I was uh, playing around with it a little more, I uh, noticed just a, so this is steel guitar, and if I barely tap the, the switch here, I change the sound. And uh, what's going on here um, is uh, these, uh, these switches that are used for the voice selection in the Pro Soloist and, uh, and on the... Uh, touch sensor effects of the Pro DGX, they're, they're really unreliable. And uh, they, they fail a lot, they get dirty. Inside, what's going on is, uh, is this. You have, um, you have this uh, dual pole, dual throw switch. And uh, there's little contacts that go in here. And when you move the switch, it moves the contacts back and forth and the PCB doesn't have these tied together so you can have one of the contacts making contact and another one not making contact and your voice code that's going to determine the routing of your audio signal is going to be um, different um, in different parts of the circuit so what we're seeing here is one of the contacts is making it here and uh, and then another uh, another side of it is being lost when uh, the switch is is ever so gently moved, and unfortunately that's happening a lot on this keyboard. Uh, this voice is dead. Uh, the voices are cutting in and out, they're not activating, and, uh, and they're, they're switching from one sound to another. And unfortunately, uh, the only repair for this is to replace the switches. Um, uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to disassemble them and clean them and get them back together and working well. Um, I have a bunch of new old stock switches, and uh, I think to fix this one we're going to have to change change the switches. Um, also, the wow effect is, is, is not working. In fact, it's actually cutting out all the audio to the synthesizer. And uh, some of the other effects are touchy, let's say. So I, I think probably the changing the switches um, would, uh, would correct that as well. Here I've got the uh, voice selection board out and I've removed all the black switches that we're going to be replacing. And what we have here is we have a very early revision of this uh, voice selection board. Um, there would be uh, more chips and resistors and stuff on later boards. This one is just very simply kind of relies on routing the switches uh, through each other and then I think there's a uh, pair of quad NAND gates at the end uh, to make the voice selection code uh, that's used by the rest of the synthesizer. So on particularly on this revision uh, it's important that every single switch works perfectly otherwise uh, otherwise you're going to get the wrong voice codes. So um, I'll be putting new switches in and uh, putting this board back in the keyboard. And uh, just for reference, let's compare the old switches, or one of the old switches I just grabbed at random, to one of the new switches that I grabbed at random we're going to put in. So I have my multimeter set to, to uh, um, resistance, and I have the, the beep tone for continuity. And uh, first we'll look at the, uh, the new switch. So I'm getting a resistance of 0 0.2, which is just the, the resistance of the leads. Uh, and then I'll check the other pole of that, 
and uh, same, same thing there, 0 0.2 ohms. Now let's check the old switch. This one seems to be reasonable. Uh, around, it's bouncing a little bit, but it's not terrible. And this other one keeps making and breaking continuity and jumping up in the range of uh, 200, 200, that was close to 300 ohms. So, th so this switch is, uh, is, is definitely not good. Let's flip the switch and test the other side. So now I'm going to put the leads on the other two, the left and the center. And that's good. And if I can get my leads down there, I'll show you that the bottom ones are good. 0 0.2, so that's good. On this side, it's not even really beeping. It's, it's, it's up above 300 ohms. The other side, is intermittently beeping. So we, we definitely needed to replace all these switches because they're, they're all pretty much like this. And I can feel like this kind of just barely any pressure. It rocks back and forth. And this one you need to use a decent amount of pressure and it stays, it doesn't wiggle. Like this one will wiggle. Uh, and w what happens is the contacts in here get shot like I showed you before. So. Uh, I'll put the new switches in and we'll check out the voices. I've also changed the switches on the touch sensor effect board, uh, board D, and uh, while I had this board removed and the rare opportunity to get to the capacitors that are buried under the switches there and there, um, I recap this, this board. So I've gone through and replaced all the black switches and uh, 12 of the patches that were incorrect or missing before are now uh, back and sounding correct. Uh, there's still some issues. Um, some patches are still not working quite right. Uh, I think offhand uh, buzz bassoon was one of them. And you're probably not going to be able to hear it, but there's a, a tiny click when I press the, the buzz bassoon. Uh, notes um, that wasn't there before, so I think uh, there's additional issues in addition to the uh, the switches that that weren't weren't working well or working correctly. Uh, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the voice troubleshooting procedure. Um, I think I show this in other videos that in the service manual. It shows the routing of the signal for each of the patches and it shows uh, waveforms that you can look for on your oscilloscope at various test points throughout the circuit. Uh, so I'm going to do that uh, starting with Buzz Bassoon and uh, we'll see if we can knock out these, uh, these few patches uh, that, that we have left to fix. One thing that changing the switches didn't fix was the, was the issue with the WOW. When we engage WOW, uh, it totally cuts out all the audio. So what I've come up with for the WOW is basically here on board D, the touch sensor board, uh, the touch sensor effects board, um, the WOW switch basically connects 5 volts uh, to this line here, WOW, which comes over to board C. And it comes straight into board C and uh, turns on and off this PNP transistor here. Um, so what I was doing is I, with the oscilloscope, I looked at the base of this transistor, and uh, with WOW off, it was zero volts, but with WOW on, it was only one volt. Um, so what I did next is I checked continuity. So right now I have WOW turned off. Um, so the, uh, the base of the transistor should be connected to ground. And conveniently, uh, there's a little point here, a little uh, via in the PCB, um, that happens to be connected to the base. So I can, I can just touch it here, and then touch the ground pin uh, coming in from the power supply, and I have continuity. Um, so when the switch is off, uh, it's it's at ground. And I can touch the five volt line, and. Uh, I, I don't have continuity. I have a, a larger resistance there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the switch, the WOW, on. And by the way, I have the keyboard off when I'm doing this. 
Uh, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check continuity between the test point and the 5 volt line. And I have continuity. But I also have continuity between ground. So uh, when the wow switch is turned on, uh, there's a short to ground. So um, we're going to pull the, the board D out, the touch sensor board, and have a look at, at where that short is. So I've got the board D out and uh, I isolated it and verified that this shorting occurs with this board completely disconnected from everything else. So uh, the problem is, is somewhere on this board. And what, I, what, I, uh, what struck me was this. Uh, so on the schematic, um, the WOW, uh, when it's uh, off, it, it isn't even connected to ground. It's just, just floating. So um, uh, we shouldn't have been seeing uh, continuity between it and ground. Uh, we should have only been seeing continuity when it was turned on between the 5 volt line. So that got me thinking, well, where could ground be coming from? And uh, the, the, the thing that I thought was uh, this pitch bend, the switch next to it, uh, when it is off, it is connected to ground. Uh, so if this line, pitch bend and wow, were shorted, that would put put ground um, would put ground uh, where we were seeing it. And I went and checked, and sure enough, so that P7 pins 12 and 13, which are uh, this pin here and this pin here do have continuity. So somewhere on this board uh, those two lines are being shorted. So I'm going to start at the uh, probably the most likely place which would be the connector uh, and the cable. So I'm going to desolder the, the cable a connector and then uh, test uh, whether it's with the, with the cable or uh, somewhere else on the board. Um, but at least I'll be able to then see where the, the traces start and follow them to where they're going. So what I wound up doing was I wound up taking this cable off, and it, it, there was no short there. Uh, the cable was okay. The short was somewhere on the board. I took this switch off so I could double check what's going on underneath there. And the short was somewhere, somewhere else on the board. These switches are really difficult to get on and off, and I just replaced them, and I don't want to... Uh, the board can't really withstand much rework um, when it comes to these switches. So uh, I did the extreme method, which was uh, I cut the trace between the connector and the switch, and I uh, put a jumper wire there. So now we can verify that there's no short uh, between the 5 volts and the ground when the wow is turned on. And we were measuring that on connector uh, J6, which is here, pins 3 and 4. So this is pin 3, and this is pin 4 and we have about 2.5 K of resistance and I'll flip the switch turn the wow off and it's the same so uh, it, it appears that we have uh, eliminated this short and uh, I'm gonna put the board back in and we'll test it out and with that we fix the wow effect uh, so here's bassoon with no uh, no touch sensor effect now with the wow And then all the other touch sensor effects still work. Pitch bend, growl, brilliance, volume, and vibrato. And they stack. And uh, wow has been fixed. So for the remaining voices that weren't making any sound, I looked into it and the signal was making it to the VCA. The envelope was making it to the VCA, but the VCA just wasn't opening up. And I drove myself crazy. I rebuilt the VCA, you know, changed the transistors and the uh, operational transconductance amplifier chip, and uh, nothing seemed to, uh, to bring this back to life. Uh, so you'll recall uh, Buzz Bassoon was one of the voices that wasn't working. So I have Buzz Bassoon turned on now and I'm pressing a key and there's nothing there. What I found was one of the biasing resistors for a transistor in the VCA 
uh, either had drifted or the circuit around it had drifted and it was no longer biasing this transistor correctly. So uh, by putting a, uh, another resistor in parallel with it, uh, I'm able to get it to respond to the VCA envelope and, and make noise. So that's our buzz bassoon and I anticipate the other voices um, that, that were giving problems um, will, will also work, but we'll check that out after I more permanently install this resistor. And all the remaining voices that were dead got fixed by this. So fuzz guitar one, uh, buzz bassoon, sax, and now all the voices on the keyboard I've, I've run through and all of them are working and sounding correct. So I'm going to do one more thing to this keyboard and I'm going to change out the sliders with the LED slider kit that I have available on my website, synthchaser.com. So I put some nice bright swamp green LED sliders in there. It makes its a funky worm patch and all the other sounds, all the touch sensor effects are working and this keyboard is fully fixed and ready to go home. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, please post in the comments or hit me up on my website, SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.